Let's talk about embezzlement for a hot minute. So um, I faced a similar scenario in, uh, I want to say it was 2004, maybe, where um, I was asked, or 2003 potentially, I don't know, um, I was asked to become the committee chair of a Cub Scout pack in Laguna Hills. And um, there was a woman, um, Bethann, who uh, was asked to become the treasurer. Because the account apparently had such a low balance, she claims that she put in like $200 of her own money. And as such, she started treating this Cub Scout bank account where we were depositing fundraising money that the kids were raising. She claimed that because she put the initial $200 in to revamp the account, um, basically she started treating that account as, as like a personal account that she could do whatever she wanted with and refused to give us, um, accounting updates and I was young and wet behind the ears and didn't realize that I should have been following up on it and when I did finally follow up on it she got her uh, allies within the Cub Scouts to tell me that I was disparaging her and that I was no longer welcome in the pack that my son was allowed to attend but I wasn't and it ended up uh, dividing the pack so severely that everybody who was in my den ended up leaving. Uh, we got half of the bank account to take with us to a new den across town. But in the meantime, they had discovered after I had been ceremoniously kicked out of the pack for asking questions about the finances they were uh, told that all of the m money that our kids had been raising were being given to another man in her den, Tom, um, to reimburse him for equipment that he was buying without telling us or asking us whether or not we wanted that equipment. And they were getting to the point where not only did we have derby equipment for the space rockets, the cars, the boats, we had all of it, right? We had all of this equipment. He wanted Beth Ann to give him the rest of the money of the account to buy a trailer to store this equipment. And they were never asking the rest of us, the rest of the leaders in the group, they didn't have us vote on it, and they were just doing it. And on top of it, the den leader, Denise, was apparently charging den dues. And so she was encouraging her specific den to pay dues to her directly, which I don't know that that ever went into the account, and um, discouraging them from, uh, from discouraging them from attending pack events camp trips fishing expeditions things like that discouraging them from attending but all the while they just took over the funds of the entire group for their own their own personal desires these three people <sighs> Anyway, so to bring you up to speed, if you want to watch these videos, there's two videos. This is on dreading.com, and it is basically a man who uh, was running a program called The Explorers to teach young boys how to get prepared to go into law enforcement. And um, the man himself worked for the local sheriff's office and he I think was like a former uh, military vet 
dude was running this program, the Explorers, and he and his wife were taking money out of the account to pay for their personal vacations, um, for uh, their child's um, college expenses, things of that nature, and um, the thing, the thing that I think Beth Ann didn't realize either, and that these people didn't realize, is that just because you put money into an account doesn't mean it's your account. That means it's a donation. It's a donation to that organization. You don't get to take it back. You don't get to take it back, and you don't get to spend it however you want. You know, so she's, uh, I'm so, this is so frustrating to watch. Dude ends up, okay, to summarize what happens here, guy faked, um, faked a crime scene to make it look like he was attacked when he actually committed suicide so that his wife would get his pension money, probably some insurance too, but he was trying to cover up the fact that he had been embezzling funds from this 503c pack that that he and his wife set up as well as the fact that he had been having several affairs he had been sexually harass sexually harassing people in the office and he had always counted on the fact that the sheriff who he was really good friends with would cover up his bullshit but the reason they're getting caught is because the fbi was brought in to know of any text that discussed hiding the money is ridiculous, especially since she admitted to her and Joe repeatedly using the funds for their own reasons. Again, it's clear that Melody believed by her bringing up the Explorer account and taking money out periodically that she thought she could be the one who framed the entire ordeal and the FBI would leave it at that. With the interviewers discussing texts that got off of Joe's phone, which he both deleted, then shot in order to make his texts unrecoverable, Melody is realizing for the first time in nearly three hours that the FBI was onto her the entire time, and they knew almost everything she stated was a lie. There was a fear you guys were in trouble. On top of this, earlier in the video, um, she is complaining about um, her husband's new boss who had been requesting an audit basically of all of the various programs that were going on in individual departments and so this is one of the pro one of the programs they were auditing and um they she was complaining this was the stressor by the way that caused uh, him to create this crime scene make it look like he was attacked by um three people and uh but he shot himself he pulled his own vest down and shot himself in the chest um but this was the whole thing was surrounding this this program that they were embezzling from um because he probably thought he could get away with all the affairs and stuff but um mm -hmm. they think they literally fit and they uh they initially blamed it on the black lives matter movement you guys they're like it obviously was blm people right they killed him he s totally staged the crime scene he shot himself um this is uh, this sucks so bad when when um white privileged people 
do crazy ass things to try and like frame um, people of color and and Antifa activists or whatever and it, it sucks so bad that this is this is how you roll like it what it tells me is that um because she made it pretty clear that she's also like a trumper right um it makes it pretty clear to me that you you all cannot take accountability for shit you are all full of shit hide the money or something it's either between Joe and you or Joe and Ian or somebody like that. I think Joe's concern was what we're, what we're guessing is that the village manager is going to find out there was an in and out money. And that may have been. Okay, do you know but that? I wouldn't have said hide the money. Okay, do you know if he ever made a comment like that or something? No, because any time he borrowed, he'd let me know and I'd be like, okay, fine, we'll okay, put it on the tally. And, you know, how much over the course of the years, because you haven't done explorables forever. Right. How much money do you think has been in and out? I, that I can tell you. For, for a long time, I know he was having like $100 of his paycheck deposited in right. the Explorer account, right. okay. you know, and sometimes it would, you know, they'd have an abundance of our money versus the other way around and stuff. Okay. Um, when Joe switched it over to a 501c3, okay. we set up a new account. Okay. 501c3, is that the not-for-profit? Right. Okay. So, so right. Account. right. Would you move it from bank to bank or just a different account? Um, same bank? No, it's at Harris Bank now. Okay. Okay. What was it originally? Do you remember? Oh, my God. I don't because all of the statements would always go to PD. Okay. Yeah, everything always went to PD. Okay. All right, so you don't have anything about any comments about the hiding money or anything like that? Uh, yeah, no, I mean, if, if I was telling Joe anything about money, it was like, just let me know what, so I put the money in. Right. Okay. Um, it would have never... Yes. I hadn't heard anything about the PM thing no. or anything like that. Okay. All right. Um, what question number one? I forgot. So. The comment thing. Yeah, there was a statement given by the village manager that on the day of, when you were at the station or you came across her at some point, you called her name and told her. Mother fucking gun. Okay. All right, I was going to say it. But, and then you made a comment that um, Joe's death was her fault. Yeah. Okay, what did you mean by that? Because I just want you to know, just, you know, that's where people are. Some people are digging their heels and I'm not. So... On the day her husband died, supposedly at the hands of three unknown men, Melody, for some reason, called Anne Marin a motherfucking cunt and told her it was all her fault. Now it seems obvious that she said this because Joe had killed himself because she asked him to do inventory, which is an overreaction if there ever was one. But it also seems like she did this because, as we've seen numerous times in this interview, she simply can't help herself. She has to have the last word, and she has to disparage the person she considers to be her adversary. And even when someone approaches her with nothing but good intentions and sincere condolences, if they had ever done anything in the past against her, she has to hold that against them. Yeah. She did the same thing to Joe's mistress and her son's ex, and each time, it's inappropriate. The fact is, is... I based it off of her comment that she was going to make sure the top four people were gone by any means necessary. Any means necessary. So we've got one that you forced out on retirement. We've got one that's now dead. You've got one you demoted to room closet manager. You know, so yes, that was my statement. That doesn't make any sense. Because again, Anne didn't kill Joe. She asked him to be on time for work, to do his job and to provide an inventory for his department. None of that is killing a person. Meanwhile, Behan was clearly not running the department very well and turning a blind eye to Joe's behavior as well as others. Okay, so it was basically a, you're getting your wishes kind of Yeah, okay. yeah, it was. Part of the expenditure, too, of uh, this account was uh, military-grade gear that would have been inappropriate to use in the program that they were running. Um, it was the kind of stuff that you'd buy for police officers or, you know, like military officers, not the kind of stuff that you would use as training materials for, uh, teenage boys. Yeah. I mean, some of the expenditures didn't make any sense. So, um, of course, and especially like considering that the PD itself was partially funding this program, uh, they have every right to ask for, uh, for an accounting of of what exactly is happening here and obviously it, there was embezzlement so but yeah it just makes me think back to my own experience and it makes me so mad 
that they bullied and harassed me when I started asking questions about the finances. Uh, they really took advantage of the fact that I was the youngest parent in the room, you know, because I had my son at a very young age. And so most of the parents that were participating were about 10 years older than me. And they really took advantage of me. And it's so unfortunate. It was basically, you fucking wanted them all gone. Okay. And whatever you have done, you have done. Okay. All right. You know, do I think she could possibly set this up? Fuck yeah. I do. That doesn't make any sense. And Marin, to be clear, did not care enough about Joe to put out a hit on him and as far as I can find, has never been accused of anything near that. She's just a city administrator who was in charge of budgeting for the city. That's it. The idea that she would be so incensed by Joe that she would put out a hit on him, then also approve getting the FBI and other agencies involved, is beyond stupid. Right. It bears repeating that Melody knows the truth and knows her husband killed himself, and yet she hates this woman whose only sin was asking her husband to do his job, that she is willing to state on the record that she orchestrated his murder. Do you think she has the ability to do that? Yes. The desire to rid that she would? Yes. Okay. I'm sorry, but I do. No, I don't think you have to When you align yourself with people that are stabbing everyone in the back, and you want something done, you've got Tommy Olsen saying, I got dirt on everybody, and I'll be your new best friend if you give me my job back. Right. And you have a labor attorney that has lost every case when it comes to Tommy Olsen. Right. And it, they hired him back twice at a huge sum of money. So, I'm sorry. I, okay. You wanted him gone. He's gone. Okay. And, you know. Let me ask you then. If we see him that, if we're going to go down, if we go down that road, how do you, how do you see that happen? Like, do you think they summon him out there? Do you think... I mean, what do you, how do you think that happens? Do you think he's meeting set up? What, in your heart, what do you believe? In my heart, I don't know what to believe anymore. Okay. I have been so beat down so much that I don't know what to think anymore. My understanding is that she had me and told him, we own this property now. There's too much shit going out there. I want you to pay special close attention to it. Okay. Okay, why? Why? You know, that doesn't make sense to me. Okay. You know... Oh. None, none of this makes sense to me. So I guess just wanted to make sure you know where he is. Right. Okay. I mean, she had done it with all of them. You will be ABC, one, two, three, right where I want you. She had turned all the GPSs on their, their spot cars. Yeah, and she was monitoring it. To be clear, Melody is now crying because Anne, the evil villain that she is, asked Joe to do his job and to patrol certain areas and to keep his GPS on so that he wouldn't, I don't know, go get a tattoo on the job, sleep with various women, or get drunk in public. You know, she had made sure that everyone in the PD knew that she was the one controlling the PD. Yeah. That is a common message that we got from him. Alright, then there's two final things with task force uh, the bosses wants to follow up on. One is the full backer issue. So if you, if you, are you planning to go home from here or do you have something else you gotta do? I can. Because right, if you can, we could follow you up there and take a peek at those if you don't mind. And then the other thing is they want to take a look at your phone just so that they can say they went through it. Now that's completely up to you. I mean, what part of my phone do they want? All of the text messages they between Joe and me? They dump everything in everyone's phone. They're asking me into the same thing right now. They're asking. They're going to ask the mayor for it today. They jumped up Joe's phone. Yeah, it's just, the phone game's no stone unturned. Right? That's what no, it's no, about. they're trying to vilify Joe. That's what they're trying to do. I mean, you guys want to sit here and put your foot around it? Okay, I want you to let me in. I can't. Let me tell you. Look me in the eyes and let me tell you. No one is vilifying up every fight of day. But no one's vilifying up to me because I won't let it happen. Okay, he's a cop. I don't care what happened, he's a cop. Melody doesn't want to give her phone over, simply because she is now aware that the messages between her and Joe were recovered off of his phone, even though they had been deleted and the phone had been shot. She had not deleted the messages on her end, and she knows that they would find more evidence against Joe, should they take the phone. Mm -hmm. So instead, she decides that they just want to vilify her dead hero husband, and tries to say no. And I don't, I don't walk down that road, okay? If someone was trying to do that, I would not be, I would refuse myself from this. Okay. Only knows my life is over because the person that fucking helped me up isn't here anymore. Has anyone along the way here gotten you someone to talk to? Do you want someone else? I don't know what I want anymore. 
by the way, it's established earlier in the video that their son was also, like, directly involved in um, knowing, at least knowing. I don't think he ended up getting prosecuted, but I don't know what the statute of limitations are. Um, there's, they are saying that he was aware of and participated in the embezzlement of this account as well. What do you have to hide, honey? you don't hand it over, they will detain you, period. They will probably anyway because you're guilty. But... The game's over, girlfriend. cheating on you too. So Holy shit. Over. eventually relents, given that her reason for not wanting to comply was flimsy at best. Melody, if she wanted to potentially get away with her crimes, even though she directly admitted to them, should have maintained that she didn't want to give up her phone. You do not need a reason to comply with the police, or any investigation for that matter. 
if you are in a position and they are asking you to consent to something and you do not want to, simply say no. The interrogator will try to apply pressure. Like if you don't willingly hand over your phone or whatever it is, that you're guilty of something. But that is not true. If you don't want to, don't. Following this interview, Melody was eventually arrested and charged with 11 felony counts of money laundering and using charitable funds for personal use. She eventually pled guilty and was sentenced to 24 months probation. When she was sentenced, Melody made a speech stating that she had no idea that the funds were being misused by her husband, despite her bringing it up in the interview, and claimed that she was innocent of all wrongdoing despite pleading guilty. If you enjoyed this video, hit the like button and consider subscribing. This video is made possible by my patrons over on Patreon, which will be linked below. And as always, if there is a video you would like to see on this channel, email me at dreading.official at gmail.com. Have a great day and remember to stay safe. Yeah, let this be a lesson to you grifters out there. Everybody who's trying to set up fundraising packs and uh, 5013Cs and shit like that. Um, C3. I think I got dyslexia on that one. Um, folks, you have the potential of getting audited and caught. And um, if all you're doing is just creating a bunch of bullshit... And using it for your own personal gain rather than a, a specific program or cause, you probably will get caught. And um, even more so if um, you're causing chaos out there in which people notice and start raising eyebrows. So, you know, if, if you are, really do believe in doing charitable things, creating programs, you best be using that money for what you say you're using it for.